for uh, joining back in and staying on the line. We're going to begin, uh, Coach Smart. We're going to go straight to questions. So let's begin with uh, Anthony Dasher and then to uh, Chip Towers. Morning, Coach. Uh, mm -hmm. I guess I'll I guess I'll come in uh, hot with a quarterback questions. That's all we as reporters seem to be getting as well. Uh, as far as JT and, and Stetson goes, I mean, is JT getting any reps at all of the ones? And kind of how is that working out here in warm ups for for this game? Yeah, I, we don't disclose that information. We just talk about the guys that are doing their job. And the, all four of those guys have done a tremendous job uh, working with us. Brock's been giving us a great picture uh, down on the scout team in. And uh, JT and Stetson are both really doing a good job of uh, simulating the offense that Munkin wants to do. And um, like I talk about all the time, we're, we're going to play the guy that gives us the best chance to win. And I'm really proud of the way both those guys um, have practiced. We've done uh, – I guess four or five camp type practices and two uh, uh, really focused on uh, Michigan uh, type practices. And, and both guys, uh, Stetson and JT have been, have been really good in terms of locked in and focused on what we need to focus on. Coach, this is uh, the Orange Bowl in Miami. Uh, you know, typically that's a really festive uh, atmosphere, but it's, different, uh, I guess, in a playoff. You dealt with this in the Rose Bowl a few years ago, but what is the what is the balance between enjoying where you are? And uh, Warren McClendon was talking about, I've never been to Miami. I'm looking forward to being there. And then, I mean, obviously the games don't get any more important than this. Can you have any fun at all? I think the fun is in the preparation. The fun is in the atmosphere you get to play in. I think when you talk about uh, – CFP, it's a tremendous opportunity. I mean, uh, no matter where you play, it wouldn't matter where you're playing to play in the playoffs, you, you've got a, a grand opportunity. We have a very mature team. We've got great leaders. Uh, you know, it's it, I, I have full faith and confidence that our guys are going to handle it the right way. They're also going to be down there for, you know, almost a week. So it's not to think that if we were having a game here um, right now, uh, and it was a big game, you know, in Athens for a week. Our guys, they all prepare different ways. They spend their time um, in different locations. And um, I've got a lot of confidence that the seniors and the older players will have a good time, a good experience. And when it's time to be focused, be focused. You know, you can't focus 24 hours a day, seven days a week and be at your best. So we're trying to build to a moment of, uh, of truth and uh, build that kind of energy and focus to where we need it to be at game time. All right, let's go to Jake Rowe, and then we'll go to Seth Emerson. Hey, Kirby. Uh, I wanted to ask you about kind of your injury situation. Um, you know, I've, Chris and Jamari were kind of banged up there for the SEC championship game, wanted to see um, how they're doing as far as their progression goes. And then have you guys been able to get through practices thus far without anything big happening? Uh, both Chris and Jamari have been practicing. Uh, Chris has, has been a little more limited in terms of volume, but he's he's practiced each and every day, and he's uh, uh, still overcoming his knee. But he's he's done a great job. Jamari's been out there every practice doing a good job and gotten a lot more work. He actually didn't get a lot of work before the SEC championship game, so he's been able to to practice. And, and you know, we've had an opportunity to get a lot of young guys work um, in the time building up to our uh, game prep and proud of all the work the guys have done. Um, but I, I can't – there's no injuries that I can think of uh, uh, significant uh, right now. Uh, Lad's been a little banged up, and he's missed some time, but we expect him back. Um, that's really it. Kirby, when you have a game – like the the defense had in its last game, game where I guess exposed is a word people are throwing out. Is there a balance between reacting to what you saw in that game versus you're about to play an opponent that is probably a different kind of offense that you faced in the last game? Um, I, the biggest thing is we're always technical with our players and we're very truthful and honest. And um, if you sat in our meetings, you would know that a lot of the games that people – might say that we dominated or held guys to lower points. We didn't play real well. So we don't do it any different um, based on the outcome. We do it based on how we execute, how we perform, not just on statistics. And 
and we've we've kind of talked to our defense about that. We're very technical and honest. What can we do better? How can we improve? Um, and then how do we take away what the opponent does? And Michigan does a tremendous job. They're very uh, multiple. They have a lot of personnel groupings. They're extremely physical, and they're committed to being physical. Um, and they, they can play in space. They've got really good athletes. Um, and, you know, we, we know that they've got a tremendous team. You know, their offense coordinator was at Alabama. He's done a great job. So the challenge is there, and, and we've worked hard to really work on us <laughs> Fundamentally, you know, self scout. What what are we giving up? What have we, what have, what are people seen on us? What changes can we make that would be beneficial for us? And that's really been our focus: is how do we get better fundamentally, not about the last game. Hey, next two questions to Mark Weiser and then uh, Charles Odom. Hey Kirby, um, after the injuries that JT dealt with earlier in the season, are you confident that he can play at the level he did in the last four games of last season if called upon? JT's done a tremendous job in all our practices and all our work of uh, being able to be effective and, and understand what we have to do uh, offensively and uh, making decisions. We get to see him um, go sometimes against two defense. Sometimes he gets to go against the one defense, depending on what we're working on. And um, he's done a good job of doing that. Another question uh, about uh, the challenge for your defense against, against Michigan. Um, uh, they are physical. They also lead the nation with uh, 17 plays over 50 yards. As you have gotten into your game planning, um, what do you see? Um, how does Michigan create these big plays? And can you talk about the challenge uh, for your for your defense in that regard? Yeah, they, they're explosive. You know, they've got explosive playmakers on the perimeter. They do a really good job of mixing run play action. I mean, you would some of their run play action, you would think it reminded you of, of, of our run play action. They hit really big explosives off of their runs, the complementary game of, okay, we've got this run. If you play this run too aggressive, then we're going to, you know, we're going to have an answer to it off of it. And eye violations, eye control of second level players is critical. Um, they have, they have really good skilled tight ends. They, they have really good backs. Um, the quarterback is extremely experienced and understands what you're doing before you do it, and uh, they can make you pay. That's where those explosive plays come from, breakdowns mostly. You know, they either break tackles or bus, and they can, they can confuse you by what they do. They do a great job of, of game planning each week. All right, let's go to Connor Riley and then back to Allison Mastrangelo. Hey, Kirby, I wanted to ask you one. How is George Pickens sort of progressing as he continues to get healthier from that ACL injury? And it always seems like he plays really well in bowl games. Is there a specific reason for that? Is the extra time off in between the games? What's the reason for George always seeming to play at his best in these sort of bowl game situations? Well, I think the opportunity to throw in uh, the two games you're mentioning, uh, you know, people try to take the run away and, 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 and you know, you do that, you sometimes leave yourself one-on-one, -on -one, and we've had an opportunity for him to make some plays. Uh, going back, I guess you're referencing uh, Baylor and uh, Cincinnati, he had opportunities to make those plays because he was one-on-one -on -one in a lot of situations. You know, he's still not 100%. George is working really hard, but, he, I mean, we see him every day, and, and getting to see him every day is he's working back to get that way, but he is not there Nobody is. I mean, there's no person on earth that comes back from an ATL and is back out there running the same speeds and confidence and breaks that you would usually have. And uh, he's, he, he continues to get better. Um, the biggest part is understanding, you know, all the details and intricacies of the offense of making sure he knows splits, um, shifts, motions, um, IDs. And when you don't do that for that long, I think everybody just assumes it just comes back natural. Um, that's not something that's just – you just wake up and do. You take, it takes reps to do that. And he's only been able to start getting these reps in the last really two to three weeks. But he is getting better, and uh, he is working hard um, at his craft, and uh, he's gotten a lot of reps the last four or five practices. Kirby, what's kind of been the message to your guys when they're going into this uh, playoff scenario where it is one and done and, and not being, you know, too high or too low going into this game when you have almost three weeks to prepare for it or if not more? Well, we really, the messaging doesn't start right away. I think you guys probably want messaging and want to build it up, but we're trying to make sure that we're focusing on us and fundamentals and 
and why are we here and what is our why and what's important to us and build to that point uh, where we get to. Now, we've done a lot of work in terms of conditioning, lifting, uh, trying to improve the depth of our roster. There's a lot of things going on, but the, we're, we're really at the, you know, the, the second, third practice into Michigan in terms of detail and uh, making sure they understand um, the intensity with which they're going to have to play with, the strain with which they're going to play with, the physicality that, that they play with will have to be matched. And uh, they do a tremendous job of that. All right, next question to Palmer Toms and then to uh, Vance Levy. Kirby, I know you all have had some of those recent signees join you here. Um, wanted to see, first of all, who those were and not necessarily how they're doing, but what kind of opportunities they have uh, to come in here and, and, you know, get some experience under their belt. Those guys have been great, man. They work really hard. Uh, they're really positive. They jumped right in. Our players have embraced them. Uh, we appreciate them doing that because we're not really doing it for their development as much as it is their exposure, but they are able to provide depth at some positions that maybe we were down on in terms of injuries. They give the scout team a much better picture. And, uh, and you know, somebody commented how, how good of kids they were in terms of doing their check-in, doing all the process, they have physicals and all the things they have to go through to be able to do it. A lot of kids just don't want to do it because it, it's kind of a pain in the butt to go through all that um, in such a short amount of time and really just to get, you know, two or three practices in, but it was important for them to do it, and uh, they've done a great job. Uh, Kirby, when you look at uh, Alabama's successful offense and game plan, you know, get rid of the football quick, a lot of that. What What's the best way to defend that? And then how do you keep your defense and line and health, I mean, uh, not getting gassed as they appeared to be in the Bama game? Well, you got to be in good shape. You got to be able to play more players. And um, there was a lot of times they didn't get rid of it quick. He held it. <laughs> There's a lot of times that, that he was able to scramble and make plays and uh, a really good athlete. But I mean, how do you stop it? You cover them, right? I mean, you, you have to be able to cover people. Um, you have to be able to play people, you know, man to man, whether it's man match or man to man. There's all kinds of different mans, but you got to be able to, to cover people. And that's a premium in all of uh, football. You look across the NFL and you got to be able to cover people. And at the end of the day, we got to do that. And you got to affect the quarterback, whether it's batted balls, sacks, scrambles, uh, disguise. Uh, you got to be good at all those things. And uh, that's, that's not going to change regardless of who you play. All right. Next question to Ryan Curley. And then we'll go to Lance McCurley. Hey, Coach, I kind of asked the, the players this too, but what's different um, about the atmosphere on campus? How do you keep them motivated? There's nothing to do but work out. There's no school. Their friends aren't in town. What's different, and is any of the messages you give them different during this time? There's just more time. I mean, I, I, I thoroughly enjoy it because we don't have, you know, finals are over, the stress of academics that some of our players go through, several players reference to me. I feel like I'm in the best shape of my life. I've been able to work out. I've been able to eat right. I don't have the stress of going in and out of classroom, tests, finals. Um, we get more time with them. We're able to do more walks. We're able to lift more. We're able to condition more, recover, recovery in terms of our treatment, the facilities. All oh, that's great. Now, when they're away from here and they're down, there's not a lot going on, but that, 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 that can be a good thing if they handle it the right way. You know, and the maturity of your team kind of exposes itself during this time because, you know, they're going to a basketball game at Stegman or they're going to their apartment to play video games, but there's not a lot going on outside of that. And um, I think, you know, most of our kids handle that in a mature way. Hey, Coach, just in the past, have you ever faced Jim Harbaugh, you know, on a, at Alabama or, or such, and just the relationship you, you might have with him and just uh, kind of evaluate his season going 12-0 and 0 and upsetting Ohio State and being in this position? Yeah, I, as far as I remember, I don't think I've ever gone against uh, Jim uh, in, in terms of crossing paths. You know, he was in the NFL for a while. And uh, Stanford, I don't think that we've crossed paths in terms of a game. But I have a lot of respect for the way his team plays. Uh, you know, he's they, they're physical, man. They, they, they like to bludgeon. They, they, you can tell they have – uh, some form of contact every day in terms of we're going to run the ball and we're going to run it right here and we don't care if you know and we're going to move you. 
And, uh, you know, I have an appreciation for, for that physicality because when you play, whether it's a game that comes down to the last possession, there's times you have to be able to run the ball to end the game. And they've been able to do that really successfully this year. They also are explosive and can throw it. They've got two quarterbacks that are very effective. They do a great job defensively. They are unbelievable at what they do. And uh, he's he put together a really, really, really talented, good roster. When you look at special teams, these guys are probably far and away the best team we've played this year in special teams. They have starters all over it. They're very aggressive, um, have a ton of respect for the way they play and the way they coach. Um, and I think that answers your question in terms of uh, Jim. We have time for two more questions. We'll go to Jed May and then to uh, David Pascal. Yeah, Kirby, um, I wanted to ask about Aiden Hutchinson from Michigan, obviously coming off a Heisman finalist and all that kind of stuff. Just what have y'all seen from them or seen from him on tape so far and just how unique of a player um, is he just from what you've been able to see of him? Well, I don't think we face anybody like him. He's different. He's uh, His length, his uh, desire and want to um, is is freaky. You know, he's, he's a tremendous athlete. He's powerful. He's long, but he plays so hard. And, you know, you don't measure a man just by his, his measurements and his 40 time and his testing, of which he has really good. You measure a man by how he strikes and the physicality and toughness and want to he has. And, and that's obvious. I mean, we've talked repeatedly to our players about strain. You know, you, nothing casual. There's not going to be anything casual about this game. Um, and it's going to be about strain and physicality, of which he prides himself on and uh, does a tremendous job. So it, it's, a, it's an incredible opportunity for our, our offense to go against uh, the likes of their defense. But it's also going to take a lot of hard work and, and toughness to persevere through the game um, and match that entire intensity the entire game. Kirby, wanted to ask just about the film study. I know a lot of coaches use a four-game breakdown during the season or whatever, but with the bowl game and extra time, um, have y'all broken down every game they've played this year? Do you focus more on the last couple because they've been playing so well? How does how does the breakdown happen with a bowl game like this when you've got more time? Well, I think everybody has their own way, and I don't think anybody really wants to share that, David, to be honest with you, because, you know, if you know what games they break down, you know which ones they don't. It's, I mean, we look at all of them. Nobody doesn't look at all of them in this time. You might not have all of them in, in, a, in, a, in a cycle or in a uh, – in cut-ups, but because you can have too much information that you can't make good decisions. But you try to find, you know, things that are similar to what you do and how they'll attack it. Same way with our offense and same way with our defense and our special teams. But we've got a big enough staff that we're able to look at everything. But looking at everything is not always a good thing. You can see, a, a, see, see too much and see nothing, or you can um, see a little and see a lot. So uh, we have our way of diving into it, and uh, we use that, and I'm sure they have theirs. Thanks. Thank you, Coach Mark. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everybody.